All right, welcome back. Today, we are going to take all the different art stuff we've gotten, take our GitHub experience, and we're gonna wrap it all together and do get our art into our game engine. So first things first, what you wanna do is get into GitHub, open your GitHub desktop application and make sure you've fetched your origin. So when you fetch your origin, what that does is it pulls all the origin files from your own branch. By the way, you should make sure that you're in your own branch. All right, I'm using my son's account because I want to make sure that my son's account is what you guys sort of understand uh, from a from a user standpoint. So anyway, so this is my zero R Donnan for Reese and then my uh, fetch origin I fetch now. So that means all of the files are updated back to the original. So I'm going to go or up to the branch as it starts, which is this game design 2D. So I'm going to double click this and then as it boots up, we're going to talk about what we're going to do we're going to take all of the assets that we've been working in oh it's an apple man there it goes so i'm going to take this character complete file that's here and i'm going to import it into our engine sweet all right so this is what we've got if i hit play right now i've got the basic stuff that you should also have in your template i've got a jump that's way too big um and i've got an apple that really gets concentrated when he starts running um and that's okay and he also after a while he blinks and turns the other way okay so i had already implemented some of that stuff but i want to show you how to implement it correctly so i hit escape all right and now i've i have access to move around remember right mouse button allows you to move around you can see that this is all 2d plane um and this level is kind of junk and we'll leave it here in a second but for now i just want to get our assets in okay so let's go back um i'm going to open over here and get back to this okay now we made sure that every single one of our sprites was 32 pixels so i'm going to take this i'm going to drag it in to right into textures for now i should probably actually move it to sprites but we'll do that in a second i'm also going to grab one of my tile sets. We'll just grab this one. Here we go, drag that in. All right, so now I'm gonna maximize this again. Uh, double check to make sure your source control is set up just while we're here. So now I'm going to move these two files because I don't really want them here. Um, they're okay here, but if we double click on them, you can see they're really blurry. So what we wanna do is hit right click and then we're going to go to Sprite Actions we're going to apply paper 2D texture settings. When you do that, it makes sure that all of our pixels are nice and crisp. And that's what we want, crisp pixels. Same thing with this guy, he's all blurry. We're gonna right click. We're going to Sprite Actions. We're going to uh, apply paper 2D settings, okay? Cool. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to right click again, Sprite Actions, we're going to extract sprites. Now, when we do that, it can automatically select where the sprites are. However, it doesn't quite work the way we want it to. The auto doesn't work very well for our little particles and stuff like that. So I'm gonna change it to grid, all right? And right now it's too big. We want our cell width to be 32 by 32 because that's what we set up our actual files for. So once we do that, we can extract and then it extracts sprites from the texture and we get a whole bunch of these textures. Let's jump back into the 2D side scroller. Notice I've got material sprites and textures. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new folder up here. I'm gonna call this animations. Now this is where we're gonna put our flip books. Let's jump back to our textures. And I'm gonna grab all these apples, all right? I don't know if I want that one. I don't think I do. That one's empty. So I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to drag them into sprites and move here. All right, so I'm moving all my sprites from my textures file to my sprites file. Now, all of our apples that we did were 32 pixels by 32 pixels. But when we set up our tile set, it was 16 by 16. So we're going to have to manage that. All right, so actually... To make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna drag this over. To, I'm gonna drag the tile set over into the sprites. Move here, just the one. I'm gonna delete this blank character one that I'm not gonna need anymore. 
because that's a mistake. I'm also going to get rid of these 2D character junk for the uh, old 2D characters. See all this running stuff? We don't need all those. We'll force delete all that. Shouldn't be a problem. And then we can leave this 2D background for now. Uh, we can leave that other stuff too. So going to sprites, we've got all this. We've also got our idle animation and our running animation. Um, that's That can go to delete. All right, cool. We're not going to use that anyway. All right. So the character complete all that and the tile set there. But my sprites are in here. And then we're going to get further in as we move. So let's look at what we've got so far. We've got our idle, which starts here and goes all the way back. So let's grab your full idle animation. I'm going to right click and we're going to create a flipbook. All right. And I'm going to call it idle. Okay. If you notice, it happens super fast. He's, he's idling like crazy. As a matter of fact, let's rename this which is F2 on the keyboard. I'm going to call this, actually let's call it PC for playable character. So PC idle, I'm gonna rename it PC idle, cool. All right, and this is a flip book, okay, which is an animation. I'm gonna take this and put it over in animations, move here. All right, cool. So that's these, so now I'm gonna get my hurt animation, right click, create flip book, and call it PC Hurt. Okay, all it should do is flash. So I'm gonna move that over into my animations. Move here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna maximize this folder so I can see it a little better. All right, so we've got our hurt. Now I've got my jump. This is my jump up. Even though it's only one frame, I create a flip book out of it. And then I've got my jump down, right click, create flip book. Okay. And this will be jump, uh, PC, jump down. We'll see if we can implement, implement that later. Notice if you look closely, there's green underneath the flip book stuff. Okay. So, PC jump up. Okay, I did a jump up and jump down. You may not have that, that's okay. Um, so we did those, we did those, and now we did the jump shoot. So that's these two. So I'm going to, uh, they're together, create flip book, and it should be called PC jump shoot. Notice all of our flipbook stuff are together, and because it's called PC, it makes sense. So this, I'm going to create a flipbook, and we're going to call that PC Projectile. All right. And then we've got our run, which is four frames, but realistically, I only need three. So I'm just going to take the three. I'm going to right click, create flipbook, PC run. All right. And then we need our shoot, which I think starts here. I think we just need these three. One, two, three. Yep, we need these three. So I'm going to right click, create flipbook. So I'm going to call it PC shoot. Okay, so now I'm going to take all these PC pieces <laughs> and move them over to animations. Move here. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken all those individual sprites and I've created flip books after. I've actually taken them and adjusted their filters. Okay, so now if I go to the animations folder, I've got all my animations, but they're all spazzing out way too quickly. Okay, so let's start with the PC hurt. If I double click on it, over here is the different sprite information. Right now it's going at 15 frames a second. We're gonna run everything at about six. I like six, you can pick whatever you think looks good. So it's all good. You can notice that there are two frames in this, this frame and this frame, and then it loops over, all right? If I wanted one frame to last a little longer, I could take this and extend it out. 
So right now, the Sprite 6, which is the flashing Sprite, like the, the normal one, uh, it lasts for four frames instead of each one lasting one frame. Okay, so once that's good, I'm going to save that and close that window. Now I'm going to go to PC Idle. Now PC Idle is where we're actually going to do some pretty interesting stuff. So let's look at our first keyframe. This is the one that we're going to last for a long time. So this keyframe right here is called uh, Sprite Zero, Character Complete Sprite Zero. I'm going to take this and drag it out to five frames. Now he looks forward for longer. If you go up here and check it out, you can see the frame run is six. Oh, I made it from zero to five, which is six. But let's say I wanted him to wait for a while, like a long while. If we're running in this thing at six frames a second, all right, and I want him to last for 30 seconds, right? Or not 30, 30 seconds is too long. Six frames a second. Let's do, let's do six seconds before he moves, all right? So let's do 36 frames. So if I hit 36, now he's going to wait six seconds before he turns. Five. Then he turns, and now he jumps back real quick. All right, so we want the transition, the blink, to be pretty quick. So let's just make that two frames. All right, so that's his blink. So now the blink is two frames. All right, now let's look at this transition. So let's say the transition, he turns his eyes first quickly, but then I want him to hold his head over that way for longer. So let's say maybe a second. So one one thousand turn. So that's six frames. One one second back. So now his idle is mostly just waiting. What we could also do is we could have him blink again. All right. So let's take this, this initially, this blink here, right? This and copy it. Okay. So what we've done is we've said, okay, we've got this blink that happens right here, right? This is the blink. We can actually take this and duplicate it, okay? And maybe drag it all the way down or something, right? We can move it around. Like if I move it here, or if I take it and move it down here to the end, now when he gets back, he's gonna blink for a second. So basically, you could have it so that we have a setting now where he's just waiting a little while, and then he blinks, and then he waits, and then he blinks. In general, you don't want him to blink right away because that kind of is weird, right? So there we go. So I'm happy with that. Let's say you could mess with this for a little while, so that's good. So our idle's good. Our jump down and our jump shoot are fine. Jump down's only one frame. I'm going to change it to six frames a second just to keep everything consistent. Same thing with our jump shoot. Right now I'm shooting like crazy. We'll do that for six frames a second as well. Save, close. All right, our jump up is fine. Change it to six frames a second. Once again, you can change this to whatever you want. I like six frames. Okay, so I think 15 frames is too fast for this. I like six frames. And I don't mind if it kind of goes, eh, maybe 10 frames. That looks pretty good. 10 frames looks pretty good, right? I'm happy with that. And it's smooth. I don't have to like change any of this. Like the fact that it's just rotating straight through is good. I'm happy with it. All right, cool. So I can save it and close it. All right, now my run. My run is where I'm going to need to add an extra loop. Because if I change this down to like three frames for now, you can see it's got to jump. What I need to do is take the second frame or this frame here where he crosses over, actually where the first one crosses over, right click, duplicate, and move it so it's in between. Oh, nope. Let's move that there. We have to look at him. So we start across. Then we've got two. Oh, okay, so let's do let's delete. So I can take this and the second frame and delete it. And then the problem is I, I copied the wrong one. So let's look at so frame two or frame one right now needs to be duplicated. Duplicate, move to the end. There we go. That's what we want. And once again, let's move it up to six frames a second. There. That's the angry determined 
apple face we were looking for. All right. And then our shoot is still too fast. So let's knock that down to six. Pew, pew, pew. All right, good. Save and close. Okay. So now let's look back at our sprites and look at these sprites here. Okay. This is a whole different setup. Now that we've got these, though, there's no animations we need to worry about here. So that's going to be fine. So let's go ahead and just leave this where it's at. And then we'll pick it up in the next level where we've got our sprites and we'll start actually making a map out of it. Okay. So what we want to do now is save our work. Okay. So we can save current, right? Or we can go to file, save all levels, which is probably what we want to do. Save that control shift S and save all of our stuff to source control. Okay. Once this is saved, got everything saving. Now what we're gonna do is upload to source control. So we're gonna submit the source control, submit source, checking for assets. It's gonna to look to see what's changed. Yes, so we are going to say we added uh, PC animations and level sprites. Submit. Now it says, okay, cool. And once this is all done, confirmed, great. So now I can go here and it's gonna say, hey, you've got some new changes. Do you wanna push it to the origin remote? Yes, I do. So I hit uh, push and all the stuff that was changed is going to get pushed up to the origin remote so that people can download it, all right? Now, everything that you have here is what's on online. So that's it. So I'll see you next time.